I've worked in technology-related industries my entire career, and I still consider that that's the case now as a full-time algo trader, due to the heavy reliance on technology, data, algorithms, and computing. During that time in the tech industry, I found that my dealings with clients and project teams, developers and testers, and so on, was always helped by using what have now become the famous tree swing pictures that illustrate in a unique and impactful way the issues often encountered with technology projects. But what I found is that this set of images can actually be adapted to provide powerful messages that are specific to algo trading and relevant to algo traders. So in this episode and the next, I'm going to be using these in order to structure a discussion around 14 different subject areas, all relating to algo trading, that are either tips for improving your trading, issues that need to be avoided, or just guidance on general best practice to help you avoid falling into the many potential pitfalls out there. So with 14 points to cover in a short amount of time, we'd better make a start. I'm going to start with this image that in the technology industry is usually used to convey the view that a salesman gives of a product. Clearly, this is a tree swing that all of your friends will be jealous about. It's possibly the best tree swing that's ever been constructed. And this is what they will tell you about the technology product that they're trying to sell you. But in an algo trading context, we also see this quite a bit from trading related companies when they produce articles and adverts that attempt to sell the dream that you can trade for an hour a day, that you can even trade from the beach if you want to, and then you can spend the rest of your day relaxing in the sun and doing other great things. I don't know what you think, but I believe a lot of people get sucked into trading because of messages like this. And I have to admit that although I never thought I'd be doing this job from a beach, I did maybe think it would be quite a bit easier than it eventually turned out to be. So I guess I was maybe taken in just a little by these kind of messages. But the reality is different. Algo trading is actually a difficult endeavour. To be successful, you need a really wide range of skills and you also need to be prepared to put a lot of hard work in. I work harder now than I've ever worked before. But don't let this put you off trading. It's also extremely rewarding and so interesting for anyone with a curious and analytical mindset. There is genuinely never a dull moment and you'll never stop learning. Just when you think you've cracked it and your knowledge and skills have progressed, you find there's something else that you need to research and learn. And I fully expect that cycle will never end. So it's an absolutely fantastic way to make a living. But I'm afraid you won't succeed by putting in an hour's work a day or by sitting on a beach. This is just the salesman's story, I'm afraid. The next image I want to use is this one. And in an algo trading context, I thought that this was a good example of getting to the point of trading in your live account, but with bugs in your code that you don't know are there. Now, of course, I'm not referring here to pre-compilation bugs that stop your algo compiling or running. I'm talking about bugs in the logic. So your algo is happily trading away, just not in the way you thought it was. There's some sort of problem with the logic that you've implemented that doesn't match what you'd anticipated building. And I know from personal experience of working with other traders that when I've reviewed the system they're using, which they thought was working in a particular way, the reality was that it wasn't quite operating how they thought. I also know from personal experience just how easy it is to get the first cut of code wrong. And what you assumed was perfect code has a logic error hiding away in it. 
So how do you avoid this? Well, you need to be really rigorous in validating behaviour, trade by trade. Firstly, you should do this in backtesting. After the backtest is finished, select a number of trades at random and make sure they opened and closed exactly where your logic intended they should. Next, do the same in a demo account with a live price feed. The difference between backtesting and a live data feed can cause different behaviour in itself. So it's important you accommodate for and unify the behaviour across the two using code changes if necessary. So when I say that you should check a number of trades, I don't mean just checking two or three. You need to check every possible scenario. Does the trade open occur exactly when it was supposed to? Does the system operate as expected in out of hours trading as well as the main trading sessions? Does the organic signal based exit work properly? The stop loss exits, the take profit exits. Are there any filters that you're using? Do they do what you expect? To do this properly can take time, but it's an essential part of the process. Cut corners here at your peril. So we've covered just two topics so far. Click top right now to continue with the rest.